Hi there, Python and Accountant here. And today we're gonna do something pretty fun. Uh, first off, you'll notice I'm using some video today, so hello. Uh, today, we're gonna take a look at a PDF file. We're gonna try to parse it using a few different of the large language models. And we're gonna heavily focus on some of the reasoning models to see how good they do compared to each other. Um, and then we're going to see if they can write some Python code so that way we can automate this process going forward for this invoice. So first off, let's take a look at the invoice that's in question. Um, this is a mock invoice from CBP, CPB software, and it really has three line items that I'm concerned with trying to extract. It's this uh, first one for 130 euros, second one for 8.12 8 euros, and the last one for 243 euros. So what we're gonna do is we're going to start in ChatGPT, and I've got the O1 model up here. I'm going to actually start with the 4.0 model, uh, the non-reasoning model. And what we're going to do is we're going to upload this PDF from the computer. And we're going to use the prompt that I have prepared. Please pull out the invoice line items and put into a table only from page one. Use the total amount to verify you got the correct values. So just so you can see, the total amount should be 381.12 and we will see if this works. So 4.0, basic, you know, main model, really smart, um, pretty quick, doesn't take the time to do reasoning, but it is doing some analysis, which means it could be reading this in with Python. And if we drop this down, <laughs> sure enough, it's actually uh, writing some Python right now. But the funny thing is it's not reading the PDF file in Python, it's actually putting into the Python code what it already found from the PDF. And this is actually really smart. So why why is this smart? So um, what we have, we the humans have realized is generative AI tools are not good at doing math, but they are good at pulling things out of images and pulling insights out of things and then giving the math questions, the math problems to Python because Python is good at doing math. So. I don't know if this is going to be done correctly. Looks like this is way off um, because it, it pulled out the quantity and the amount per quantity for each of these lines. Um, and the reason why this is wrong is I didn't ask for the amounts per item. I asked for the actual total amount. I didn't specify that explicitly, but it should be smart enough to figure that out. It should also be able to figure out that the you know, one, I asked for it to, to cross-reference or check, compare against the total. It didn't do that. Didn't even talk about that. So this is a complete fail. Let's go over to ChatGPT with reasoning and see if it's able to be a little bit smarter here. So again, we're going to upload the file. We're going to use the exact same prompt. And we're going to see if the reasoning model, O1, is able to do a better job than the GPT-4.0. So this is going to take a little longer because the reasoning, by definition, requires it to take time to think about it. And what OpenAI decided to do is give us some insights, not complete transparency, but some insights into what's happening behind the scenes here. So establishing invoice totals, identifying line items, piecing it together, confirming the totals. And OK, this it's including the VAT, which is fine. Confirming invoice accuracy. So yes, using the net total of 381.12 looks correct. And let's see if it's able to get the line items to add up. And let's uh, take a look at the table that it created. Oh, this is looking good. So we've got the 130 line item, the 812 line item, and the 243. And it says the line items add up to 381.12, which matches the net invoice total shown in page one. So this actually found the correct amounts, um, the right column, Let's see if it got the right line item. So it should be the basic fee, WM view, transaction T1, transaction fee T3. And basic fee view, transaction fee T1, transaction fee T3. So this is a perfect, you know, this is exactly what I wanted. It gave me the line items, it included everything in the table, gave me a subtotal, and then matched that subtotal against the, you know, total in the, in the invoice. So this is awesome. All right, let's see what Claude's able to do. So I was trying to play around with it earlier, and let's see if it uh, gives me kind of a similar result. So I'm gonna give the same prompt here, 
and then I'm going to attach the file. Now Claude does not currently have a reasoning model, but it is still highly intelligent, and I've been very impressed with a lot of what Claude has been able to do, um, including things like this. And it's also really good at programming, so we're going to see if any of them are able to give us good enough Python code to do what we're asking. All right, so this is a really quick response. It didn't do the reasoning steps, but it did exactly what I wanted, it looks like. This is awesome. So, and this is even more comprehensive than uh, the ChatGPT-01 model because this recreated the table. It gave me the service description, the amount without that, the quantity, the total amount, and it pulled the three totals over that I wanted. And then it added up to do the math to make sure that it matched up. So this is great. So good job, Claude. Um, one more for fun, Gemini. I'm going to use the newest 2.0 Flash Thinking Experimental. So 2.0 Flash is like a faster, not quite as advanced model, but the thinking makes it much more advanced. Um, now, oh, it's limited to images, so I don't think it's going to let me upload the PDF. So, okay. Gemini, you failed because you can't process a PDF. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so let's let's move on to part two. I'm not even going to try 4.0 because it couldn't even do it for the first step. So we're just going to compare these two, ChatGPT and Claude. So what we're going to say is um, great. Now write Python code that can load that PDF file um, at the path. And I'm going to give it the path just so I don't have to retype it in next time. The PDF file uh, path is this. Um, so I'm asking it to load the PDF file, parse it to create the same table you show above, and calculate whether the total items brought in by value match the total line in the invoice. Do it uh, dynamically rather than hard coding any numbers. So I can run it on new versions of this same format invoice. I'm not really going to do that, but um, I'm really testing to see whether it can give me, you know, what I would want it to do if I was actually writing this, you know, some Python code in real life. So I'm, I'm guessing, because I've been playing around with this before, I'm guessing it's not going to get it perfect, but it'll be interesting to see how good of a job it does, whether it gives me you know, an empty output or a correct output. Previously, I asked it to give me a, a, a data frame, a pandas data frame. Here, I'm letting it decide what it wants to do. It'll probably still give me a pandas data frame, so I guess we'll see what happens. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and kick off Claude as well to do the same thing. And I want Python code that can load the PDF. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, let's see um, how they're able to do against each other. All right, so PDF Plumber is one of my favorites. That's great. It pulled the PDF path uh, in that I asked for, which is awesome. So let's go ahead and, um, and I've already installed PDF Plumber in this environment, so I don't need to have that in there. And I'm just gonna run this and see what happens. Whoa, okay. So not bad. So we got the line item one that we're looking for. We don't know what this is, don't know what this is, don't know, none of this stuff is what we're looking for. It got the VAT amounts, got the gross amount with VAT. So yeah, this did not quite work right. So I'm gonna give this feedback back to OpenAI just to see if it can figure this out. Okay, here's what I got. Not great. Can you fix? Remember, I'm just gonna say anything. I'm just gonna say, can you fix? Now, while that's trying to fix it, let's go and see what Claude gives us. So Claude has this nice little window over here. Um, we're going to take a look and see how it does. In um, some cases, Claude will actually render and run the code in this window, but it can't do that with Python. It can only do that with, uh, with JavaScript. So let's go over here, and I'm gonna start um, testing this out in the window down here. And I'm just curious what library this one uses. So this is using the Pi PDF2. I've also installed this one. Interesting choice, using the decimal library. That's actually really smart. 
Um, whole nother whole nother thing we can do there. I think I've done a little bit of previous videos with decimals, but it's actually quite good when you're trying to avoid the issues that come with rounding. Um, and this sort of forces it to do decimal places. Whole nother topic we can go down another time. But um, I think that's pretty interesting that it decided to do that. All right, uh, I think we have an error here. I can see <laughs> this is an issue. Return decimal. So let's see what it what it tells us. Um, invalid return decimal clean invalid operation. Interesting. I don't really know what to do with this. So you know what, Claude, can you figure it out for me? I'm just going to paste the error in and see if Claude's able to fix it. Now, I usually only like to give like one extra chance for these to see if they can fix it, um, and then we'll give up if not. Okay, this took 48 seconds to reason. That's a lot longer than it usually does. So let's see if it's able to get it right this time. So we're going to copy it. Now we're back at the uh, ChatGPT version here. So let's go back up to ChatGPT's. I'm going to replace this and give ChatGPT one more chance to get it right. Again, I don't need to pip install PDF Plumber, but I appreciate the suggestion. I'm going to run this. It did an error, so that's good. But let's see what the output shows. All right. Oh, man. Okay. Got basic fee. Okay, so it, it didn't give it to me in a table, but I didn't ask for it in a table, so I'm not going to argue. Um, if I asked for it in, I mean, I kind of asked for it in a table, but if I asked for it in, in like a pandas data frame, I'm, I'm sure it could have done that instead. But this gives me the 130. The 812, the 243, it adds up to 381.12, 381.12, and let's just make sure that it didn't hard code anything in here, and yeah, it did not. This is beautiful. I love it. Fantastic. Um, yeah, next time I'll make sure I ask for a data frame because that, that would be important if I was using this for real. All right, so we got version two here. Let's try one last chance for Claude. Can you... Get this code to even run, Claude. Code ran, and we have a discrepancy. Boom, boom, boom. Nice try. We got the 130. We got the 812. But we're missing one of the line items. So, hey, this is pretty good. I would say, ChatGPT, I'm giving you a pass on this. Claude, I'm giving you a nice attempt. Needs more work. Not quite got it, but... Well, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, you know, if you like this, please subscribe and like and follow for more. And we'll see you at the next one.